y'all are having a great evening this evening. I'm out here with Ryan and we're gonna be taking care of the chickens tonight. So we thought we'd bring you guys along. So we have this electric poultry fence from Premier One that we've been moving around the yard in. Now I realize we haven't really kept you up to date on the chickens. We've been focused more on the garden on this channel. So I figured we'd insert some clips here and show you guys how we've been taking care of the chickens up until this point. So when we first got the chickens, they came in the mail in these boxes and the chickens arrived at the post office and the post office called us. And then we went into the post office, picked up these chickens and we brought them in and Ryan had built some brooders and put them on the back porch. So yeah, I built these brooders out of two by six lumber, um, they're five by five foot wide. We actually brooded all 100 in one five by five square. We brooded them till they were three weeks old. And by the time they got to three weeks, they were pretty big. So I think next time I'll split them into two five by five boxes versus one. For the brooder setup, we had two heat lamps and a heat plate for 115 chickens. That kept them fairly warm. We had a couple nights that got kind of cold down into the 40s even. So we covered the brooder with plywood and cardboard. We had a thermometer in the brooder so we could monitor the temperature. So we, we felt confident that they were staying warm. Then we also put wood chips down. We bought wood chips from Tractor Supply. Another piece of the brooder that we had to install was this netting on top. As they got bigger, they definitely were able to jump up on the sides here and try to escape. So when they arrived from the post office, we counted them, put them in the brooder. We ordered these chicks from McMurray Hatchery and they're the Cornish or Jumbo Cornish Cross, right, Ryan? Yeah. Jumbo Cornish Cross uh, chicks, we had them unsexed. They have the option where you can pick to have them sexed, either male or female, because the males typically grow larger than the female birds, so you get more meat for your buck. But they do charge extra for that, so we went with the cheaper option, which is unsexed chicks. And when they arrived, we counted them and put them in the box. They actually sent us 15 extras, 115 chicks, and we did lose a couple. So I put them into the net when Ryan was at work the one day when we moved them out. And I counted them as I put them into the net, but I forgot. I don't know exactly how many chicks we have at the moment, but we think we have about 105-ish at the moment. We'll definitely give you a final head count when we do butchering. So we were shooting to have them in the brooder for three weeks. We had a cold spell there and some rain. And so we postponed bringing them out into the field um, about half a week. So it was about three and a half weeks in the brooder. And then we brought them out to this setup here. This is just a, a poultry netting from Premier One. There's several different types of netting. Uh, this netting is specifically for poultry and it is the taller netting. You can get some shorter netting. We kind of decided to get the taller just to prevent animals from getting in or birds from getting out. There's a, also another netting that has much smaller webbing on the bottom. That could definitely be beneficial if you're putting your birds out earlier. Um, we waited until they were three and a half weeks, like I said, so they were large enough that they, they really didn't get out of this smaller netting unless they were scared. Um, that did happen a couple of times. Once they got used to it, used to the electric, they stayed off of it. And now even if it's off, they don't come anywhere close to it. And this is powered by this electric solar energizer we can show you guys. And we do have coyotes around that have come up into the fields that haven't seemed to bother them. We haven't lost any chicks since we've moved them out here. We've been keeping our food in these black trash cans because we don't have a garage yet and our shipping container is a little walk away. And what's, what's really good about this feed is it's high in protein and that's what you want for meat birds just to make sure they're putting on as much meat as possible. And we did go the organic route for this feed. Uh, that was a decision we just made. So we give them feed as well as grit. And the grit just helps them digest their food. So these are the feeder boxes I made. Um, pretty simple design. We've just been keeping these feeders up underneath the meat shawl just to keep it out of the rain. So if you saw our last video, um, made this meat shawl is what you call it. And it's just a structure for the chicken. And this just gives them shelter um, from predators, from the sun, from the rain, um, keeps them cool. They typically all stay underneath it at night. They sleep under it. Um, and they're coming out at, during the day and eating grass. So the way this works is the fence is set up. I have the fence set up and the fence stays in place for about four days. Every day I move the meat shawl 
to a new spot in the grass. You can see if you look that way, you can see all bare grass and eaten up and lots of chicken poop. And then as you look down this way, it's scratched up somewhat, but much taller grass, it's greener grass, hasn't been touched as much. So they really stay around the meat shawl, really for protection, they feel protected there. So moving the meat shawl every day gives them a new place to sleep and spreads out their poop more, utilizes the whole space. I actually just noticed while Ryan was filling up that feeder that there's a dead chicken underneath the shawl. This is the first one we've lost since moving them out into the electric netting, which was how many weeks ago? Um, about four weeks. No, yeah. three weeks. About so, three weeks. So they've been out here three weeks with no predators or anything getting to them. This is another reason why it's probably a good idea to move the shawl every day just so you can get up under there and see if there's any dead birds. Water. Okay. Ryan actually adjusted the plan slightly for this water to fit in here. We took this five gallon bucket and we drilled holes in the bottom and added chicken um, water nipples to it that we got at Tractor Supply. The chickens just go up and kind of peck at it with their beaks and water comes out and it's, I prefer this one actually. I think it stays a lot cleaner. As you saw, this traditional waterer that I just filled up, we have to hose it down every day because poop and grass and other things. With the lid on this one and the way it's elevated, we never have to deal with poop getting up in it. We also have our protector owl. His job is to keep all the aerial predators away. So far, he's been doing pretty good. And for this owl, we just move him around every day. Um, just gives predators the idea that he's real and this is his home. Well, thanks for hanging out with us this evening as we took care of the chickens. We plan on processing these chickens ourselves, so we'll be sure to keep you updated as we do that process here in a few weeks. Yeah. They're already six and a half weeks old, and we're butchering around eight and a half weeks, so that'll be coming up shortly. Yeah, yeah. Fill up our freezer. I'm excited. Yep. But I hope you all have a great Easter evening. Again, I'm Kara, and this is Ryan, and this is Bluebird Homestead. Hope you all have a great Easter day. Bye, y'all. Oh, yeah, and just so you guys know, I should make the clarification. We've never raised meat birds before. This is our first time. We both dealt with layer hens when we were children, but it's been a while. So we don't know exactly what we're doing either. So join us in this adventure. You yeah. can learn with us. Yeah, we're not experts by any means. Mm -hmm.